Welcome to the opening ceremony of the Cyber Wellness Student Ambassador Program 2015 Conference. The CWSEP Conference is a collaboration between MOE and MDA under the auspices of the Inter-Ministry Cyber Wellness Steering Committee. In partnership with Innova Junior College for pre-U, poly and IT students, it is a by students for students program that provides an extended platform to engage student voice and promote cyber wellness peer advocacy. The theme of this year's conference is A Better Internet Begins With Me. As student ambassadors, we all have a role to champion cyber wellness and lead our peers towards building a better internet for all. May I now invite Ms. Liu Wei to deliver the opening address. Ms. Liu, please. Dr. Sherlin Chi, Divisional Director, Education Technology Division, Ministry of Education. Ms. Lai Lei Kim, Director of uh, Outreach Division, Media Development Authority. Mr. Michael B. Silva, Principal of Innova Junior College. Distinguished speakers, guests, teachers, students, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to all of you. I'm very happy to join you at this Cyber Wellness Student Ambassador Program 2015 conference, jointly organized by MOE and MTA, in partnership with Innova Junior College. Thank you. The, this by students for students conference promotes cyber wellness peer advocacy. And this year we've included students from the polytechnics and the ITEs. Can you give them a warm welcome? You find that youths in the same age group have many common points of interest. Maybe they've already bumped into uh, one another on the internet and don't know. I'm sure that the discussions will be rich and diverse. Hopefully it's not just on uh, what computer games that you play. The theme of this year's conference is A Better Internet Begins With Me. The internet has become a very indispensable part of our lives, not just for the youth, also for the adults. And uh, it enables us to obtain timely information, discover new interests, and keep in touch with friends and loved ones through social networks. In this digital age, one can post a status, a comment, a selfie, video online with just a simple click. It can be seen and shared not only by loved ones and friends, but also acquaintances and strangers from any part of the world. And therefore, we all have to be discerning in the things that we post online and strive to be responsible users on the online space. Sometimes, I mean, we're all humans, we are careless with our speech. But when we are careless with our posts on the internet, the consequences can be far greater because the audience is potentially multiplied. Recently, the now former Director of Corporate Communications, how ironic, at an American media company, she lost her job after she posted a racist joke on Twitter. She was about to board a plane to South Africa when she tweeted, very carelessly, going to Africa, hope I don't get AIDS, just kidding, I'm white. Despite having only some 200 followers, you know how um, fast you can spread, the message went on to online news organizations Social media users around the world all taking a pot shot at her, expressing disgust. Very quickly, her company found out. And I guess between the company's reputation and her job, who do you think went? Her job, right? There was also an incident far closer to home in Singapore, where a winner of a radio TV personality contest lost her title in a very short span of 12 hours after organizers found out she posted offensive comments about ugly Singaporeans and overweight people. Her offensive tweets were published on a social media site and organizers stripped her of a title. So we can learn two things from these incidents. Firstly, people can and will judge you based on a single post online. 
particularly if they don't know your whole character, which is more than likely on the internet. Even with privacy settings, people can still find them and they have a way of forwarding them. And others will form opinions of you, rightly or wrongly, based on your postings. Secondly, whatever post you, you put on the internet will form your digital footprint, which is very difficult to erase. And negative posts are likely to result in negative consequences. More likely, people love forwarding negative posts, right? Generally, not the positive ones. Now, having said all that, that's very depressing. The internet can also be a platform where you can leverage to do good and spread positivity. You might have heard of Brawls Over Trolls. It's a project by a group of NTU students where they encourage social media users to adopt positive online behavior by identifying with a new symbol, Brawl. An internet troll, as all of you know, posts controversial inflammatory messages online to provoke other users and to disrupt discussion. So a brawl is the opposite of a troll, someone who likes posts frequently but not thoughtlessly, uh, who share about the good done by others, especially those which are less known. The brawl adds value to comments. In other words, somebody who builds up and not tears down. Users can nominate their friends who have positive presence and influence online as brawls and send them an appreciation email through their website, www.brozone.com. There's another good example, which I'd like to highlight, Wired Warriors, a project also by NTU students. And this project hopes to instill social media literacy in Singapore use by identifying and addressing some common problems associated with the use of Instagram, like low self-esteem and cyberbullying. The team created a survival guide to Instagram to raise awareness about being kind, careful content creators on Instagram. And they held events to spread awareness on contributing to a happier and kinder online community. And these two groups of students have taken a proactive role in making the internet a better place. So we are glad that all of you have stepped forward to be cyber wellness student ambassadors in your schools. As cyber wellness student ambassadors, you can make a difference. And you can play a part by role modeling, ethical and responsible internet use, and influence your peers positively. You will need to develop an awareness of issues that you and your peers may face in the cyberspace and think of ways to communicate them to your peers. I know it's not the easiest job, it's not the coolest job either, but it's a very important job. There are many good examples among you. Ambassadors from Innova Junior College planned the Cyber Wellness Program in their college. They held an assembly talk on the topic of online safety and you, and conducted cyber wellness lessons on being respectful to yourself and others online. And the students also organized netiquette and cyber safety challenges where participants embarked on challenges which included posting tips on cyber wellness, reflecting on a cyber wellness video on social media, and posting a self-composed jingle. And notice that all these challenges are aimed at increasing the number of cyber wellness advocates online. Over at River Valley High, ambassadors held cyber wellness workshops for parents. I thought this was a fantastic idea. Since you know much more about the internet and how your peers use it compared to the older generation, who better to educate the parents than all of you? Now, a better internet begins with ourselves, but we cannot do it individually. Only by collaborating, supporting one another, can we achieve this goal. So since 2008, MOE has put in place a cyber wellness framework to guide schools in planning their cyber wellness program. Starting from 2016, which is next year, MOE will be integrating the cyber wellness lessons into the character and citizenship education curriculum for pre-university. We've already done this for primary and secondary, so the, the last milestone would be the pre-university. These lessons will deepen students' values and equip you with social and emotional competencies. 
some of the topics you'll probably be interested in, I, I know I would at your age, enhancing your career employability through learning how to manage your online reputation, developing intercultural intelligence in online and offline communications, I know the titles are not too hip, but uh, I'm sure you can advise us how to change the titles. Exercising discernment and harnessing digital technologies to benefit self and others. Respecting ownership and intellectual property rights of online content. All very useful. Through these lessons, we hope to equip all of you with the knowledge and competencies to thrive in the digital future. I know that polytechnics and ITEs have their own cyber wellness programs for all students. So you might be wondering, so why do we still need student wellness ambassadors and advocates when the authorities seem to have got it all in the curriculum? That's because I don't think we have all the answers, we don't have all the right uh, lessons, and, and we all know that we are only human and have our vulnerabilities. And from time to time, um, we will make mistakes. Having friends and peers to look out for us will minimize the fallout from our mistakes and help us to recover. Just last week, I hope you've been reading in the newspapers or at least online, by two post-secondary students who were self-radicalized by believing that what they read on the internet without checking reliability and perspective, they were ready to hurt people. They were ready to hurt people, real people in Singapore, and cause chaos in the community. It's unbelievable, right? That somebody beside you in a lecture theatre could be the one. It's happened. All of us have a role to play in being sentinels. We can be observant, and if somebody we know spends a lot of time on the internet, changes behaviour, or becomes withdrawn, moody, highly defensive or aggressive, or particularly strong and extreme belief, we need to alert a trusted community leader, a teacher or a lecturer. And I cannot stress how important this is. It's happened already, not just what happened last week. You've heard of Falun Gong, you've heard of uh, Children of God, cults, uh, and more recently ISIS. It's not just one religion, it could be many types of cults happening. Okay, so it's happened again and it will happen again, so let's remain vigilant. At today's conference, we are honoured to have distinguished guest speakers to share their expertise and insights on cyber wellness issues, such as the importance of maintaining a positive cyber identity. And our keynote speaker today is Ms. Melissa Creed, CEO of the National Volunteer and Philanthropy Centre, which drives hashtag GivingTuesdaySG a campaign that encourages individuals and businesses to give their time, money and voice to a cause. And Ms. Kree will be speaking on the importance of having a positive identity and how it can lead to healthy relationships and a positive online presence. It's also an honour for us to have Mr. Jonathan Yuan and Mr. Sean Kong to join us as panel speakers today. And Mr. Jonathan Yuan is a partner at Raja and Tan Singapore he will talk about the legislation governing behaviour in cyberspace and implications of antisocial behaviour in the cybersphere. It's not just all cowboy town out there, you can get into real trouble. Mr. Sean Kong, Chief Training Officer at Halogen Foundation, Singapore, will be sharing his views on youth advocacy in the new media landscape and how students can be advocates of positive online influence. I hope he will also share about how to keep oneself safe on the internet because I, I'm very grieved when I hear some people stand up for a right behaviour on the internet and then after that they get bombarded. So perhaps you will share how we can protect ourselves from that. In addition to our speakers, two student panellists from Innova Junior College, Charlene and Katya, will also speak about their experiences on being cyber wellness student ambassadors and how they reach their peers. The panel will be moderated by an IJC student, Tanaba. Last but not least, the breakout sessions led by student leaders from IJC will be an opportunity for you to engage in deeper discussions on cyber wellness topics. I hope that today's conference will motivate you, inspire you to embark on this journey as ambassadors. 
Finally, I would like to encourage all of us, whether student or adult, to play our part in building a better internet and a better world for everyone. Let's remember that there aren't two worlds. What happens on the internet affects us physically, cognitively, socially and emotionally. And who we are affects the nature of the internet. So thank you very much.